going to show you how to play Dinosaur 1944. I'm Sandy Peterson and let's do this. For reverse, we're going to set up. I got my card set up for my ambushes and my weapons. I'm going to put one skull on the camp log and then one skull. These are not the correct skulls, of course. A lot of my things here aren't the right ones because it's preview. So we're going to put one skull on each of the heroes. They start with a skull. I think we got one. We're going to give them health. We start at maximum six, eight, and Mrs. Stroop has a mighty 10. Then our camp integrity starts at 10 and it goes down to a zero. And this is the first invasion. We've got the map set up with a T join here. It connect, this is the death trap map. It connects up to these two normal jungle tiles, which have exits leading. Oh, in fact, that exits the wrong way. There we go. These exits lead to these tiles which are supposed to be special tiles. I can pick any special tiles I want. Some are hard, some are easy. So I picked one tile that was good for me, the Lava Lake, that's good for players. And I picked one tile that's neutral, the Funeral. So it wasn't a complete wimp, but you know. And then these lead into this jungle tile, which exits then to the camp. We're trying to keep them out of the camp. In the actual game, I'd have a barricade I'd put here. <coughs> so you know you couldn't go back and forth there, but we can just remember. Every tile has an exit. This is the only tile that has two exits. So this exit goes this way, and there's an arrow or always something showing or dinosaur tracks, and the arrow goes here. So there's our start. We're gonna place our characters. So we're gonna place Mrs. Stroop here. We're gonna place uh, Captain Lanrazak. He's crawling, he's gonna, we're, we're gonna put him here, and we're gonna put um, Private Hamblin here, because why not? We can say it's hard to anywhere we want. And now, the first thing that happens is we are going to roll for the enemies. Now normally we'd have, this is the start tile, so all the enemies are gonna come in here. So we'll just roll for them, we know how many there are. And there are, we roll three um, minion dice and one elite die. And it looks like what we got was, we always, so we get one, two, three, we get four minions. We're using these little ankylosaurs for our minions just because I got a bag of dinosaurs and I don't have the real figures, so we got four of them. There's always there's always either three or four in the, with the three player game. It's always either equal to the number of players you have or plus one. I got a plus one, so great. And then I don't get any elites, but I do get two raptors. Now raptors um, can move two squares. They don't go towards the uh, camp. They go to wherever they can attack, and they're going to stay here and attack Mrs. Stroop for reasons I'll get to in a second. And now they're going to attack. So Mrs. Stroop's ability is that enemies lesser minions, if there's more than, if there's at least two of them, one of them stays out of the fight and doesn't attack her. So our our vermin roll one die each and they're gonna roll three dice total because one of them is not gonna fight. In fact, it's a troop, they gotta get a blast to hit her. They got a, a blank, a speed, and a blast, so the blast damages her. And now the raptors. Now normally they would roll two dice each, but because Mrs. Troop is there, one of them doesn't do it. She makes he makes puppy dogs eyes or instead. We'll roll for that one that's remaining. It got two blasts, dang. She took two more damage, that's not so good. Okay, they're done, it's our turn. So Mrs. Throop is first going to shoot at the enemies in her area. She rolls just one die and she misses. And now she's going to spend her skull and buy this ambush to go here. And then she's going to retreat to the lava lake because she's scared of the enemies. Okay, it is now Captain Lanrazak's turn. He's going to go in here and shoot, and he is going to spend his skull, and he's going to ask Mrs. Troop if he can also spend the camp skull, and she says yes, because it's all me. And that means he gets to in upgrade his weapon. Now he rolls two dice. Let's see how this looks. And he got two blasts. Okay, with two blasts, he can either kill two vermin, or he can kill one... Raptor, because he can combine them into a speed. These take a speed to kill. He's going to kill the two vermin, um, because that way he gets two skulls, which is obviously better. And um, and then he's done. And now it's Private Hamlet's turn. He's also going to come in here and fight, because why not? And so he's going to come in here, and he just rolls one die. And he got a brain result. That means he didn't kill anything, so he completely failed. So that's depressing. Okay. That's all there was. It's already the next turn. The turn advances. And now the enemies move. So the vermin move one step and they split up because it's a T-joint, so they go like this. Now, these raptors can either stay here and fight them. They have to go where there's heroes, or they can go attack Mrs. Droop. We're gonna have them go attack Mrs. Droop. 
because she takes less damage from them, and also we want them to be here in the Lava Lake tile. Okay, now new enemies come in. Let's see what we got. We have, again, four vermin. Dang it. Well, we killed two last time, but they keep coming. And of course, if any of them get to our camp, that's one damage to the camp each. And then we get one raptor, which will stay here. It can't get to Mrs. Troop because it only moves two spaces, so it'll stay here where there are heroes it can reach. And we get one pterodactyl. Now, pterodactyls have a movement of two, and uh, they don't attack. They just, like, sweep through going to your champ. We're going to have the pterodactyls go this way so they'll be within range of Mrs. Troop if we need to get them. And now this ambush fires. It produces one blast and kills a vermin, and that gives us a skull for our camp logbook. Woohoo! And now the enemies are going to attack. We're going to have... Um, they're going to attack Captain Landrazak because he has the ability that his defense is already always what the least common die is you roll. So the three vermin roll three dice, and they got one skull. That's the least common thing, so I guess they got one hit. And now, which is kind of sad, because if they rolled that against Hamlet, we got no hits. And now the raptor is going to attack, again, Captain Lammerzak, and he gets one brain. Okay, so Captain Lammerzak's awesome ability may take two damage when Hamble would have taken none, but that's how it is sometimes. Okay, now over here, Mrs. Stroop is being attacked, and because one of the guys doesn't attack her because of her ability, we just roll two dice, and she gets two blasts. Dang. She takes two damage. That's not good for her. Okay, now it's Captain Lammerzak's ability. So, he is going to shoot at the enemies here. And he gets a brain, which is nothing. Okay, then he's going to move here, two spaces. And now, in the lava tile, you have the ability to take one damage to push a monster into the lava. Because you get too close to heat. So he's going to do that. He's going to take one damage. And he pushes this guy into the lava, and it dies, and he gets a skull. And uh, so that's good. And now, uh, he uh, Hamlin gets to spend two, two dice two things. He's going to upgrade his attack and roll two dice against these monsters. And he gets a, a speed and a blast. The speed kills the raptor, the blast kills the vermin. That's really good. And he gets two more skulls. Sweet! He's going to spend the two skulls on buying this uh, trap. Now, it can't take more than two traps, but he's got two traps. And then he's going to move to here. And that's going to be his move. And uh, finally, Mrs. Troop. She is going to take one damage and push this guy into the lava, getting a skull. Actually, the skull goes to the camp. And then she's going to move to here and roll her attack and miss. Dang it. Okay. Third turn. Let's see how this goes. On this turn, first the enemies move. The pterodactyl moves two spaces like they do because, you know, they're fast. This vermin advances here. Now, the fumerals ability is that if you end your turn in it, it, kill, it, dam it kills a monster or damages a hero. So that guy's a goner, so that's good. He's going to advance to the lava lake, and these guys are advanced like this, and then we are going to roll for our new enemies. And we got a Styracosaurus. Okay, well, first there's three vermin that appear. So that's always... A positive thing. Then we have one raptor, and the raptor has to move two spaces. It can either go against Hamblin or Landrazak, and because Landrazak is down to three hit points, we're going to have it go after Hamblin. Um, and then we get a Styracosaurus, and here is Bully Land's awesome Styracosaurus. Now that's going to be a problem because he's really hard to kill. Um, but uh, that's that, that's how the game works. Styracosaurus should be hard to kill, and it is. There's my Styracosaurus. See how cool he is? Um, okay, now. Traps go off. So we have this, these traps produce two total blasts and kill these guys. And I get two skulls, which is nice. And I don't have any other traps right now. Maybe they should have laid traps there when he moved. Okay, he's going to attack with his one die against, uh, against Stroop and he gets no hit. Nice. He's going to attack with one die against uh, against Hamblin and gets no hit. And then the Raptor attacks with two dice on Hamblin and gets no hit. Nice. This guy attacks with one die against Landrazak and, of course, hits him because Landrazak is, is terrible. Okay. Um, so now it is the hero's turn. We'll start with Hamblin this time. So Hamblin 
is going to shoot at these monsters in this area and he gets a, a blast that means he kills him oh yeah and he dies because of the fumarole so that gives a skull for the this here and then the other die goes to Hamlet and Hamlet's going to spend this die and this one and he's going to get a uh, a defense upgrade because he needs a, he wants to be better defended and then he's going to spend this he's the boss he doesn't have to take any permission he's going to put a trap here and then he is going to, he's still pretty healthy. He's going to go here, get ready to fight whatever comes in next turn. Okay, um, Stroop. Stroop is going to shoot at her monster with her, actually Stroop is going to spend these last two points with Hamblin's agreement and upgrade her weapon. And her upgraded weapon is awesome because it automatically produces one symbol and you didn't need it and she kills this guy. She gets a skull. And finally, Captain Landmerzak, he is going to shoot at this monster with his two dice, and I only roll one, and he kills it, thank heavens, and now he is going to retreat to the start area where he can heal up next turn, because he's down to two hit points, so that kind of sucks for him. Okay, let's see, it is now the next turn. But this turn, we go to the second invasion. That means more enemies are going to come. And we have our first Bach monster, Nothronicus. How cool is that? First, we'll move the monsters. So this guy can move here or here. He's going to move here and attack Mrs. Stroop. He, this guy can move either direction. We're going to put him this way, so he'll go through the fumarole. Um, he can go either direction. He's going to go this way, so he can go into the fumarole. Well, actually, he's going to go this way. He can go to the lava lake. And now, the new enemies that come in, there's two, there's two groups of them because that's how many enemies come the second way. So the first group has three vermin, a pterodactyl, and it says a styracosaur, but we don't have another styracosaur, so we can pick any other large animal, so we get a kentrosaur. Now, the attacks here. We're going to have this thing kill the pterodactyl. This ambush has a, can combine to do that, and this ambush will kill one of them. It's two things there. Oh, I almost forgot. We went to the next level, so that means everyone gets a skull. Because when we go to the next wave, we get everyone gets a skull, so that's good too. Okay. And, uh, oh, and our other invasion, we get three pterodactyls. Oh, that have to move two, so that pterodactyl shouldn't have stayed there. Um, well, we won't run back time and do that. So we're going to put two of them here and one of them here. And then we don't get another boss monster, but we get three more vermin. So you can see the numbers are starting to grow. Fortunately, we're, we are now able to get our second level upgrades, which is nice. Except we also get Nothronicus, the new boss appears. He rolls two yellow dice. And, uh, and, his, and he has a defensive of blast, but he has three hit points, because there's three players. So we have to get hit him three times to kill him. But if we kill him... He gives us his special ability for the rest of the game, so that's kind of cool. So now the enemies are about to attack, but before they do, we are going to end this playthrough and say, now you've seen how the game works. It was pretty fast. Now, if there was more than just me here, there would be a little more discussion of where enemies go, and our pieces would be better. For example, these cards for the heroes are actually undersized, because I just printed them off of my computer. They're bigger and nicer. And of course, we'd have the real cards for the attacks and ambushes. Um, and the real dice instead of my my little dice that I have here. And everything would look a lot nicer, but you got to see how it works, and that's what's important. Thank you.